Well, hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the A10. Now, this is a little bit confusing for me to record because we got so many projects on the go right now. We got the repainting of the little MIG. Uh, I'm fitting my AeroWorks prop plane with a, my jetty system. Uh, we've got painting in progress for the A10. Fuselage is not clear coated yet. So there's just stuff going on all over the place. And while we're waiting for more clear coat, I am recording the next video in the series. So hopefully this all makes sense when it all comes down to it, but stay tuned and we will start with the equipment fitting of the Skymaster A10 Black Snakes. All right guys, so as I mentioned in the little prelude there, um, we're kind of in between a bunch of projects right now. So I just wanna keep things moving along and that's why we are recording or starting the equipment installation of the Black Snakes A10. So we've got all of the parts clear coated on this plane except the pieces sitting behind me. So these are the last pieces of the puzzle. Went to my paint supplier a couple days ago and uh, they're out of stock of the same matte 2K clear coat that I used on the rest of it. So anyways, they got more on order for me. It should be here hopefully tomorrow. We'll see, who knows, tomorrow's Friday, so we'll see. Anyways, we're moving on with the equipment installation and uh, this is ready to clear coat. We've got to just give it a dust wipe first. So when we do get that, we will be finishing that video as well too. So anyways, um, things are moving along. So we are starting our equipment installation on this aircraft. We're doing a few things to this aircraft, quite a few things. I probably have touched on this before, but let's touch on it again. All right, thing number one, not necessarily in this order that we're doing things, but uh, we've got the Zykoi 180 engines. I uh, still haven't listed the JetCat Centrals, uh, sorry, Jet Central Cheetahs yet for sale, but I'll be doing that probably this coming week. So we're putting these 180s in the aircraft. Um, so that's happening. Uh, other thing, we've got a whole box of goodies here that we've looked at before. So a new Jetty Central box. Um, MKS servos, a Demon Cortex. So all that stuff is going in the aircraft as well too. Um, that's kind of the two primary things. Uh, we're gonna be redoing a little bit of the air control system. So we have the Zykoi sequencer in there versus the, uh, the I call them crap boxes, but uh, the black boxes that you can get from Skymaster, these things. So we're, uh, we're ditching this thing to go with actual valves and a Zykoi sequencer. And then we'll be do it, redoing the wiring plumbing on this aircraft as well too. So it kind of feels like a, a build, but it really isn't a build because the, you know, the organization and all that kind of stuff's done already, but we'll be doing a lot to this aircraft. So what we're gonna start with is the wings. Now what we'll start with on the wings, well actually what we're gonna start with is we're gonna be setting up the, uh, the plane on the jetty radio. So I might probably cover some of that. Um, now there's a lot of Jetty fans out there. There's a lot of people that are happy that I'm now using Jetty, which is cool. But, uh, so I'll probably cover that. So we're gonna get all the Jetty stuff set up first. And then what we'll do is we'll move into the wings. Just cause the wings are all clear coated. They're all ready to go. Servos are fairly easy to access and uh, we can get those set up fairly easy as well too. So anyways, guys, let's uh, do step one, which is gonna be updating all the Jetty products. So let's dive into that and talk a little bit about what we're using in this plane and maybe some whys. All right, so for you experienced uh, Jetty users, this probably is just going to be fairly normal stuff for you, but uh, I'm just gonna cover this anyways because I've been told before that people like the stuff I cover even the basics and we can always learn something. So anyways, what we're actually putting in this plane and this is the choice of uh, the owner, David, 
and uh, I've been running my planes this, is, this way as well too. So we're using a Rex 12 in this aircraft and uh, we're actually using two of these. So we've got another Rex 12 sitting right here and uh, the reason we're using Rex 12s is, um, and this isn't confirmed by anybody, this is just opinions, uh, better antennas on the Rex 12s and also the second one gets set up in clone. So basically this, uh, I, I'm saying basically a lot I feel like. So this plane will have one Rex 12 receiver and another Rex 12 set up as a clone. And then um, anyways, yeah, so that's how it's getting run. So when you get the new Jetty stuff, you always want to update it. So you go into Jetty Studio and you open that up. Um, Let's see here, tools, device updater. It's pretty simple stuff. And then your computer may be a little bit different, but you plug in the, uh, the Jetty USB dongle. I gotta select COM3 for my port. And now it's asking me to connect my device. So I connect the Rex 12 to the adapter, E1 port, not EXT. And so it shows you here what, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So it shows that the Rex 12 has version firmware 1.14 and there's a 1.15. So we select 1.15 and we update it. So I do this for every new plane uh, that I've, I've set up. So uh, we've set up three jets, not including the F-14, but we set up three jets, one being my Huracan, and then a, uh, the A-10 that I built, and then also the Elan. Uh, those are all set up on Jetty. So first thing we did with those planes is we plugged in the receivers and all that type of stuff and updated everything. So we're gonna update the one Rex 12, we'll update the other Rex 12, and put the other Rex 12 back in the box. We're not gonna worry about uh, setting up as a clone right away, because it doesn't matter at this point, it's just to get the, the plane programmed. But we'll still update the other one, and then we'll update the, uh, the central box 310 as well too. All right guys, when you're updating these central boxes, they need to have power to them to update. So we're going to plug that in and then what we do is you use port E4 is your update port. And it actually has a little USB uh, symbol in there. Oh, I think you got to have the USB in there and then power it up. Yep. Okay, so you put your USB in there and then you power it up. Uh, so on here, we've got firmware version 1.03 on the central box and the current version on the, uh, the Jetty system here is 1.04. And it actually tells you what the updates are. So fixed fail safe delay for receiver. So anyways, we'll update that. And that takes a little bit longer, but uh, doesn't take very long, it's like 30 seconds or so. Other nice thing with the Jetty stuff that I find is the user manuals that come with it are pretty awesome and uh, tells you quite a bit in there as well too, how to hook different uh, configurations up and things like that, so um, works good. So we will also be using the remote switch. So the remote switch is the way that you can turn on your aircraft from your transmitter. We don't have one here, but uh, it's easy to install at any time. All right guys, so we're gonna get uh, kind of into the nuts and bolts here a little bit with the radio. I'm just gonna show you a couple quick things and maybe some tips for you. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is just mark our primary receiver. Just so we don't get it mixed up with the other one. So I just put a little P on there with a paint marker. Uh, other thing that I've learned with the Jetty setup is, thank you David for this, 
Um, now that I've gone through this, it's pretty awesome. So David has a, uh, when, when I got my shop radio, and uh, this isn't my shop radio anymore, but when I got my shop radio, uh, he made sure I had a blank on there. Now the blank has all the hard work basically done for you uh, with a lot of the alarms and all that kind of stuff. It's already finished. And uh, if you start with a, a completely new setup on a jetty, um, it's fine. It's not overly complicated. It just, if you want to start getting a lot of the telemetry and stuff in there, it can take a little bit of time. So we're going to just copy the blank. Oh, we don't want to do that. Don't want to delete. We want to copy and we're just going to change this. I've got a couple A10s in my radio, so I'm just gonna put this in as David A10. There, so now we've taken that blank one, okay, which is here, and I've already got another copy in there, and we've made a copy of it, and then renamed it uh, David A10. Now you can see that my screen changed because I got different colors for different, uh, different uh, planes. Now what we'll do is we're gonna bind the primary receiver to the radio. Now this is all basic stuff covered in Harry's videos and, and all that, but I just wanna show you guys, cause this is all fairly new to me now. So we'll go to, you can do it a couple ways, but we'll go to advanced properties, wireless modes and trainer. So it's already in the pair primary module. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to use this, but uh, it says really use this receiver. Yes. So now our primary receiver is bound. And now it's buzzing because we still have our bind plug in. So we'll take that out and we'll plug it back in. And there we go. So now it's bound to this receiver. So we want to take that one step further now. We'll set this aside for now. And bring the central box here. Now on the radio, we've lost telemetry because it's lost the receiver. And if we go into R1, we can put our bind plug in as our switch. That's, so that's acting as a switch now, not a bind plug. And then now we pull this out. Warning, low voltage. And we're there. Low voltage. So this central box is probably set at a low voltage. So that's why it's giving me the warning because this profile, this blank profile is set up with all those warnings already in place. Okay guys, so we got a couple things to deal with here. First of all, um, I'll show you what I did. I just had to wait for my camera to cool down. So, um, go into system, sorry, that's not right, Mod device explorer. So initially when I set this up, my pin configuration, uh, E1 was set up as a jetty box sensor. So that doesn't jive with the, uh, the central box properly. So I had to change port number E1 to an EX bus uh, output, which I have done. And as soon as I did that, now the receiver is outputting a signal to the central box. And in our device explorer, the central box shows up. So now when we go to the central box, Oh, other thing you have to do with uh, this type of setup is your fail safe on the Rex 12 needs to be disabled because the fail safe is set up in the central box. Okay, so now we can go into the, the central box and take a look at everything in here. Uh, output period, we'll put that to 17. Um, and then we've got all of our expander ports which are all adjustable and all that stuff. Now the receiver inputs, it automatically picks this up. So it uh, shows R1 there is an EX bus, uh, which is what um, we've got set up.
Okay, RX alarm enabled. Output voltage, so this is rare. Right now we're getting that low voltage alarm. So we wanna do an output voltage of, we'll just go to eight volts to begin with. Actually, we'll go to 7.4 because we're using LiPo batteries in there for, for the setup. So now, as soon as we did that, the central box output voltage has changed and we no longer have our, our alarm going off, right? So that's fine. Alternative pin configurations. Right now, we don't really need to do anything here because we haven't set anything up yet. Uh, servo fail safe. We'll do all this stuff as we get into things. And then we've got our servo output mapping, um, which we have to do as well too. So for you experienced guys, this is gonna be just your common knowledge. Uh, if you're a new Jetty user like myself, this kind of stuff I find really interesting and valuable. So I'll try and maybe limit the amount of uh, programming and things that I actually put in the video. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, link a comment down below or comment down below in the video and uh, I'll decide whether I'm gonna include more or not. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into the radio and we're gonna set up the design of our plane. So uh, four, uh, flaps, two ailerons, two speed brakes, two rudders, two elevators, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna get that done. All right, so the first patient is on the table and we are getting started with uh, our servo swap. So we've got all of our prep still on here, so we're gonna pull that off first. Uh, we can't put the pylons on yet because those that's another thing that needs to be uh, clear coated. So we'll wait to do that. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch out these servos. So I'm making a legend as I go through this because we got flap one, two, three, four in the radio and uh, we're just making a, a legend so I have an idea what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm starting flap one as the left outer, then inner, then inner, then outer is how I'm organizing that. Uh, there's a lot going on in these wings, right? We've got our two flap servos, we've got our aileron servo, and then we've also got our air brake servo inside there. So quite a bit of stuff going on. Uh, what we're gonna start off with, I think, is the flap servos. So we'll start off working with flap one, flap two, and then we'll switch over to ailerons. As we're doing all this, our lines and everything are gonna get changed. So we're gonna switch that out to an ash lock connector as I usually use. And uh, so let's kind of start dismantling this thing and we'll start by pulling out the uh, the servo there for flap number one. All right, so we've got the uh, flap number one out. Uh, screws are taken out of flap number two. And uh, it's always, you know, I guess interesting might be the right word to see how this is all ha has gone together. So um, Jack, the original owner of this plane, uh, he did solder connections here because he had the power box uh, servo connectors that were used on this end here. So I think the easiest thing to do is, ideally what I wanted to do was find out where the center was on the servo. Um, so I think the easiest thing to do is we're gonna cut it off at this end and that'll le leave a nice long lead because these things are probably going to a new owner. So um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Just wanted to show you guys that. And uh, as we go through this, what we're gonna do obviously is we're running new wires. So when I cut this off, I'm gonna put the little piece of power box wire on there, pull it through, and it's gonna save me quite a bit of time trying to pull wires. It looks like most of these wires are all going uh, that way around the front of the wing spar. The wing spar stops about here. So um, anyways, that's uh, what's going on. So what we can do to check the centering of the servo is just run the servo. So it looks like our center is roughly about there, which kind of makes sense because this, uh, the flap system on this aircraft, um, it requires, as you can see, a really long arm. So that's why we've ordered two inch uh, servo arms for the MKS servos. And uh, it requires a lot of throw to make these flaps slide all the way down there. Uh, their uh, channels here. So let's switch the servo out. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that wire through and then we also have to switch these uh, L brackets onto the new servos and uh, we'll get that started. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are 
getting the flap servos set up in the radio. So basically the middle point roughly on the 8711, that's just me moving the, uh, the arm and finding out where the end points are. So this is roughly the middle point on the 8711. And this is the middle point on the, uh, that I've kind of pre-set up here. Now, when you put uh, full flaps off, uh, you're going to be coming back like that. There's tons of room in this space to be able to get those flaps all the way off. Okay, and then full flaps. You're basically 100% movement there. We can go a little bit further, but that's going to give us pretty good geometry for the 100%. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this a little bit, one notch more this way, uh, just so we're as close as possible to, uh, to matching that guy. Everything worked well with this setup, so I think if we just take this, turn it one notch to the side, and match that as close as possible, that's gonna be a, our good starting point. Okay, so we've got these servos matched quite well. Uh, there's a shot for you there. So servo arm's been attached. Don't forget your Loctite guys. I talk about this in every single video. Uh, always use Loctite. So we've Loctited the end uh, bolt there and also the pinch bolt. So that part is done. Now what we'll do is the flap servo number two is essentially the same kind of setup. Uh, this one only goes back so far because we've got our wing tube right there. So, but we're gonna set up our angles to be exactly the same. So I'm gonna pull that other servo out. We're gonna plug it into the flap two spot in the central box, and we will line that up with this one and get it uh, as close as possible to matching. All right, so we've got flap servo number one, flap servo number two, and we have a spline or an arm that doesn't line up with the other one. So what we're gonna do initially here is we are gonna take these servos and uh, we're gonna match flap servo number two, which is the one closest to the root, to number one. So we'll just go into our sub trim menu. So that's going to be flap number two, and we are just going to sub trim that to match the other servo. And at least that gives us a starting point. It may not stay here because this is our takeoff flap setting. So we may end up adjusting this but at least we're gonna get it nice and close where those arms are roughly at the same angle. There we go. So that's a good starting point for this wing. And what we can do is we can pull the other flap servos out now that we've got it all figured out and we can get those guys set up as well too. We just gotta to make sure our geometry is right, the direction on the servo is right and all that kind of stuff then we can at least have all the servos matching. So let's pull those other servos out, figure out our geometry, and we will go from there. All right, so here's the typical setup that I'm using on most of my planes. And of course, we've got our beautiful Sky Candy landing light towel to uh, prevent us from scratching the uh, lovely new finish. Thanks, Sky Candy, for that. Um, so. Generally, I, this is kind of repeat stuff if you watch my builds before, but basically you don't want to be using the servo um, cable to add length to your system. And what I mean by that is you want your connector accessible from this point. So if you have to take the servo out, you pull the servo out, you've got access to the connector, nice and simple. If you used this length and you had it run to kind of this area here and this wire was nice and tight, then there's no way to get that servo out without cutting the wire and it's just a mess. So this is what I would typically do. We've got a decent amount of wire there and servos ready to be installed. Now this servo is just like a millimeter wider than the JR servo that came out. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of sanding on the, uh, the blocks here, and then the servo is gonna slip right in. All right, so we now have both flap servos installed, and it's time to put our surfaces back in. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. They just slide into the grooves. The flaps run on bearings on this kit. You can see right there. And we're just gonna do the linkage up and the flaps will be installed. So we have to do our programming on the flaps and we will do that once we get the ash lock connector 
done on the wing side, but uh, we'll get these guys installed. All right, so we've got the first flap set up here, and I just wanna show you the geometry on the arm. So there we are kind of angled backwards like this, uh, which is good because that means we're not gonna interfere with the tube on this side. Uh, the middle point, which is about right there, is gonna be our takeoff flap point. And then our full flaps is here. And you can see there the full flaps, that arm is straight and pretty much in line with the linkage, which is what we're looking for. So that's gonna be our full flap position on the A10. And that's uh, as simple as it gets. All right, so now that we've got both flaps installed, the surface is complete, it's time to move on to the other surfaces. So we've got the aileron, which is an external linkage, pretty straightforward, and the tricky one on the A10, which is the internal uh, air brake servo. So um, the easiest way to access this is to let the aileron droop down, and you need access from the end and also from the top. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna do a couple things here. We're gonna take the aileron servo out, get the line run first. That allows us access because the wire, uh, the cable for the air brake servo goes right through this area. So we wanna have this nice and open. So we'll pull that aileron servo out first and then we'll work on the air brake servo. Okay, so we're getting the other servos ready. We've got the aileron servo out, we've got the air brake servo out, and this is what the air brake system looks like. So uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, and so with the air brake servo, what we're doing is we're using a Dubro arm so everything matches the existing setup. Now the reason you need to use a nylon arm here uh, is a couple reasons. Number one, it needs to be spaced off enough from the servo so the ball joint works. Uh, this nylon arms, in this situation, it works good because you've, you're supported on both sides of the nylon arm, so it's acting just like a clevis. So we are uh, using the exact same Dubro arm on the MKS servo. Uh, aileron servo, because we're using a clevis, uh, the best thing and we're just repeating exactly what we did on the stock system that was in there already. We're just using a nylon arm, exact same length, and uh, the, the golden clevis, the Sullivan golden clevis goes through there. So uh, pretty straightforward on that. So we're gonna get the air brake servo mocked up first. And uh, this servo was also installed with the rubbers. And because of that, when I look at inside the wing, it's off adjust a little bit with these clevises. So we're gonna skip out using the rubbers and, um, and basically we'll have a little bit straighter line with the, uh, the linkage set up there as well. So let's get this part installed. When I pulled these servos out, I attached a string to the servo line. So now when we pull our power box lines through the maxi wire, uh, it's pretty straightforward to use the string. We'll just pull two lines in at the same time. Now, thankfully I have my RTL fasteners kits here and a little plug for RTL fasteners guys. If you haven't seen their website, go to their website, check it out. And I also have an affiliate code for you to save 25% off your order. Uh, links are down below, but the, the discount code is JV30, and that gets you 25% off your order. And uh, awesome kits. It's really nice to have all this stuff just readily at hand. So this is the metric uh, two and 2.5 kit. And uh, in this case, I'm just using the washers there from this kit. And then we're using the stock screws to hold this on. The reason I'm using the washer is just to give more support for the screw and uh, nice to have. So check out rtlfasteners.com guys. JV30 is your discount code to save 25% off your order. All right, so we've got the first air brake servo installed. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some spiral wrap, love this stuff. And we are going to wrap it around this section of cable that goes from the servo uh, through that little hole there, through that little hole there into the actual opening, which is right down there. And obviously that's just to protect the servo line. It doesn't get a lot of movement because it's only the surface moving like this but uh, better to make this long, more long-term and uh, 
never have to deal with a frayed servo line. So we'll just cut that off, spiral wrap it up, and then we get to the adjustment portion of the air brake. All right guys, so we are done with setting up the air brake portion of this left wing. Uh, we've got everything put back together. Now one of the things that uh, is kind of important here is these golden clevises, they need to be loose when you are setting these up because you have to adjust them uh, independently. And uh, what I'll do now is once this is all set up like it is, I'm just going to take some thin CA and basically put it on the threads with some kicker. And that just helps lock everything in place. So now the CA is curing on those threads and we don't get any play in the clevises to the threaded rod. So this is all set up. Uh, I've already set up the endpoints in the radio for that one surface. And uh, you can see here I had it plugged in and that was all done before we plugged it in or ran it to the wire. So last thing to do as far as servos go on this wing is to put our ends on our cables and we'll get the aileron servo installed. All right guys, all the servos are complete and uh, happy with everything that turned out. These uh, MKS servos are actually really nice, quite impressed with them uh, compared to some of the ones I've used in the past. There's like absolutely zero uh, backlash on the gears and uh, it's nice to see actually, it's, uh, it's impressive. If you look at the servos that we're pulling out of here, now these ones don't have a lot of use on them, but maybe you can hear this. There's just a little bit of play in there. You'll never really notice that during a flight, but uh, over time the, it's gonna get worse and worse. Just like these servos have zero backlash right now and over time they might develop just a little bit, right? So um, we're almost done this wing as far as the control stuff goes. Next thing I was looking at was the actual connectors itself. So we've got 12 servo wires and two light wires. So what we can do is we can either use a 12 connector and then a six, or we can use a nine and then another nine. I'll have to see what I have for ash lock connectors, but uh, we wanna split that up into two connectors and also uh, it's gonna simplify our connections at the wing as well too. So that's kind of the next thing we have to deal with. Uh, I can also put the servo Hatch cover's on now. This one, we have to pull the, uh, the clevis off to get it back on. I just wanted to get that all set up uh, with le length on the linkage and lock it in place and everything. So I'm gonna put those covers on there and then we'll take a look at doing the ash lock connectors. All right, so wing connector side is complete. Airlines were keeping all the same, but the wing connectors, we have put ash lock connectors on here. So we've set these up a little bit different uh, just so we don't get them confused. They're both nine pin connectors, but uh, once we're done with the plane and everything's good, we'll color code them both. So one will paint with a paint marker white, uh, the other will just leave black or paint it yellow, one of the two. And uh, pretty straightforward right now, I've just marked them out just so I've, I know which uh, servo is which. So when I do the other side, the, um, the opposite connector, I've got that all laid out. Now I talk about this quite often, yeah, on my on my videos, the reason I use ash lock connectors and the reason I put the pin side on the wing is, so if you want to right now use the aileron servo, all you have to do is plug in a servo connector right there, making sure you get the correct polarity based on the wires. And now you can play with, adjust, do whatever you need to do with your surfaces because you have this connector on there. Okay, so with the connectors done, next thing to do on this wing is to get the landing gear reinstalled along with the, uh, the gear pod. So that's basically the last step on this wing other than the, uh, the pylons. But uh, so I'm gonna get that kind of organized, get it reinstalled. Pretty straightforward on this section. Everything's just getting plugged back in the way that we took it off. And as I showed in some of the first videos, we have all of our 
hardware that we took off marked out. So not we won't necessarily use this hardware. I mean, the little screws we are, maybe the main gear we're using this, maybe we're not, but at least we've got all of our hardware marked off. And I just wanna give a shout out to each and every one of you that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Uh, it's really, really appreciated. And as your name scroll across the screen here, whether your donations are small or big, every little bit counts. And I thank you guys for that so much. Um, if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, there's links down below to donate to the Shop Build for the lighter side of RC. Thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we are done this wing. We are going to shorten the, uh, the red line here a little bit, but uh, we'll wait um, to get this connected to the fuselage. Wing is done. Uh, we got the gear all installed. Uh, the stock setup for the landing gear used three millimeter Festo connectors on the gear up, gear down and brake. So what I've done, because we had to cut these lines here for the lock, is I installed three millimeter Festo connectors. Uh, two of them there will do the same thing on the other wing. And uh, that makes any future removal of this gear nice and easy. But, uh, and I also used some of my 3D printed clips that are available at the lighter side of RC. Just used some CA and stuck those on the side. So we're all done this wing. Um, obviously the only thing left to do, as I mentioned, is put the pylons on, which is fine. And uh, let's flip this thing over and take a look at what it looks like on the other side, the exciting side. And I think I've said it multiple times already, but I absolutely love this black snake scheme. It is so dang cool looking. Man, that is awesome. What a phenomenal scheme for an A10. So there's the top side there. Looks amazing and uh, super cool. Really impressed with this, turned out awesome. Obviously we have the other wing to do. So I'm not gonna show you guys any of the other wing. It's gonna be exactly the same as the wing we just done as we just completed and uh, that's the end of this video. So we accomplished a lot in this first uh, reassembly of the A10 video. Uh, we still are waiting on clear coat for the fuselage. So fortunately we have lots of things that still need to be done. So that's everything guys. I announced on Facebook earlier this week that uh, Lighter Side of RC is now an MKS dealer, which is cool. We'll be adding stuff to the website. I'll link to the website down below. If you haven't been to the website, check it out. There's lots of fun things on there. Uh, we're a dealer for many other products as well too, and the website's always growing. So thanks guys for watching the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this portion of the A10 refit. Uh, again, if you guys want more Jetty content uh, in these this A10 video, let me know in the links down below. And as we go through this, I will, uh, I'll continue to add more Jetty stuff as we go through it. So uh, thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying the end of summer and we'll see you guys in the next video.